it's me again. So Doxa is a massive underrated brand with an amazing rich history. But not everyone is the kind of guy who will wear a massive orange compass on a business casual occasion, except for me. Some people prefer safe tones, safe designs. However, Doxa knew that and they pulled out from their archives the Sub 200 model. So don't miss the trailer of this watch because I worked a lot on it. So I have the pleasure to introduce you to a historic diver, an icon, the Shark Hunter. Don't, don't try this at home. Don't play with the grinder while you're watching the camera display. Never. Number one, the Doxa Sub 200. It's not a poor man's Doxa or an entry level watch. This is a reissue of a iconic Doxa diver. It's called the 300T the Shark Hunter. That is true, the new Sub 200 has the roots inspired from the past. Before the most iconic orange diver from Doxa's factory saw the light of the day, they launched the 11804-4, being nicknamed on the dial as the Shark Hunter, which was produced starting with 1963 in four different versions. This model having a beveled case of 43 mm, a depth rating of 300 meters, an outer rotating bezel with luminous markers on the dial and on the baton hands. So this is a true rarity on the market. This Shark Hunter is an attractive option for collectors who admire the construction of a unique Doxa Sub 300T. Number two, this so-called Shark Hunter, it's actually Doxa's first diver with an unidirectional bezel launched in the mid 60s when as you know the battle for the depth of the ocean started and uh, a little bit of history in the 60s when comex entered in the scene alongside jacques cousteau every watch manufacturer got back to the drawing board in the attempt to not be left aside or behind in the race to conquer the depth of the ocean certina black punk ZRC, Rolex, Omega, Mido, Oris, and I'm pretty sure I barely scratched the surface with the list. They were all engaged in developing new technological features to keep the helium outside of their timepieces. Every effort being made as a sign of commitment to craftsmanship and technology that every brand was aiming to earn it. So if Comex chose Rolex, but in reality Omega, and there you can convince yourself by watching the real history of the Omega Seamaster, Jacques Cousteau's preferred brand wasn't any of those two. More, he partnered as a brand ambassador with Doxa, and from there you don't need me to tell you what happened. What is important, Mr. Cousteau participated in the creation of the Doxa 300 as we know it today. And our young shark hunter was forgotten. The pillar of Doxa was fading slowly in the history. The second half of the 70s is the beginning of the recession in the Swiss watch industry. Sadly, Doxa did not survive the quartz crisis and ceased the production in the 80s. But in 97, the Jenny family acquired the rights to the brand. And in the 21st century, under new wings, Doxa returned to the market with the re-editions of its legendary diving watches. And speaking of legendary watches, the Sub 200 has a familiar aspect. Where have we seen that design before? Number 3. If you wonder why this Sub 200 has a familiar design, 
Well, the initial design was made by the same manufacturer that was producing the cases for the famous Seamaster 300 and the Speedmaster. Its form is very similar to watches of several other manufacturers, such as Omega Speedmaster or Omega Seamaster 300 and Ebenhard's Kafograph. This was due to the case supplier, which was Huguenon Frere Compagnie. At that time, this Swiss company supplied waterproof manufacturers with many housings, including Doxa, Ebenhard and Omega. The model reference number 11804-4, apart from the impressive sizes, they were distinguished by good properties, such as water resistance at 300 meters, which was obtained without the use of a screw-down crown, and being powered by an automatic winding caliber 11. So due to its rarity and still low recognition, this is one of the most interesting diving watches of the first half of the 60s. But getting back to our days as first impressions, the finishing level and the detail is amazing. With even and sharp transitions between finishes, the quality is there. If you'll hear this sound in the woods, run! It's not a sub 200, it might be a rattlesnake. The decoration of the dial is simple and effective. Here we have cream colored loomed indices outlined by polished metal edges that provide a great contrast with the matte black dial when revealed on ideal lighting. The proportions of the dial are in perfect harmony. The loomed indices are the same width as the hands and as the bezel insert minute markers, balanced with the vintage fonts used for the Sub 200 and for the Doxas logo. The hands are finished on a mirror polish, both rectangular. They can be distinguished by a little break in the middle that the hour marker has it, where the minute one is straight and simple. On the loom section, as well as its competitors, the Ocean Star Tribute or the Diver 65, they all suffer on the same thread. In our case, this is an uneven application of loom from the hand to the indices followed by the faded bezel application. The action of the bezel is firm, snappy and satisfying, helped by the distance between the case and the bezel, ensuring space for excellent grip. It's one of the harder bezels to turn, but that really just ensures that you're less likely to accidentally bump it out of alignment. Clearly the standout feature of the case is the twisted lug design that provides a heavy Omega vibe. So the twist of the sub is a bit more drastically than those of the Speedmaster, but the resulting effect is the same. The polished bevel that runs the whole length of the watch curves down towards the bottom of the case and makes an excellent transitional surface between the top and the side of the case. When looking at the Sub 200 from the side, you can immediately spot the vintage design of the 60s. Starting from the bottom a slight chamfered cut, managing to slim the side case, making it more playful, more elegant. Closed with a sharp polished chamfer that separates the brushed side from the front side. Followed by a brushed facet of the outer ring that closes with that grippy bezel ring looking like spines that protect the vintage domed sapphire. Speaking about their famous beads of rice bracelet, you have to know that it complements very well the described watch so far. Not only from the design perspective, but from the size and weight perspective. Purpose-wise, it really helps the watch to highlight the desired vintage vibe. And for how it wears, well, even though the 42mm size might make you think that this watch is on the bigger size, in reality is one of the most sculpted but elegant watches I've ever owned. The lug to lug distance is only 45mm, making it really comfy on a 6.5 inch wrist. To me it feels like a slim 40mm case. On the downside, because the lugs are really short, it's quite an adventure to strap it on a NATO. The heart of the Sub 200 beats at 28800 BPH, cased into a reliable ETA2824-2 with the classic date complication. 
still there is an inspired move that Doxa does to their modern watches. They combine heavily vintage aspects with bright accents, bringing playfulness around their logo. The fish logo sitting proud stamped on the clasp and as an orange accent on the crown. Inspired choice on the case back as well. The composition of their logo alongside the waves qualifies it as one of the best case backs I've ever seen. So the new Doxa communicates fresh nowadays, very visual. They use colors and nicknames to baptize their timepieces. As an example, the packaging is modern as well. They offer a navy blue harness zip pouch that contrasts their iconic orange logo. So to conclude, the Sub 200, I'd say it's one of the best divers under $1,000 with premium historic finishings and performance. So happy moment. Without a doubt, the Sub 200, the Shark Hunter is the sixth Brave Beater on the channel and hope you'll see this watch with other eyes from now on. So if you own one or plan to buy a Sub 200, wear it with pride and tell its story to everyone. Because this is my role here, to research and to bring in front of you the best untold stories. And that is the mission of the Brave Beaters channel as well. To contribute on your decision to enjoy and to appreciate what you own. So guys, if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for future updates. And until next time, stay safe.